Friends! Angels! Guardians! Let me your spears! Why did I point at my face? Welcome! Episode 14 of the Throne of Angels video blog! I'm Derek Osborne, your host, also known as Angelic One, here to show you a world in miniature from the Throne of Angels. <laughs> Welcome to the 4th of July. Yeah, we, uh, well, I live in the state of Washington and we have no like laws for fireworks out here so if you hear booms and explosions um, it's because I've got lots of neighbors blowing things up all right got my list how is everybody hope you all are well good good I'm well I'm fabulous fantastic wonderful you let's start out with dream pod 9 they've got a lot of July specials going on details on the standard blog throne of angels .com. they've got some awesome uh, some awesome downloadable content on sale, uh, buy one, get one type stuff. Also, uh, new deals in regards to some of their sets. So, check the details. Again, throwdomangels.com. 1650 game by Tertio Creative on Indiegogo. I'll throw up a link, like here, somewhere, probably. Um, details in the comment section, more than likely. But, uh, some of the greatest miniatures like that I've ever seen. I mean, they are phenomenal 32 millimeter scale stuff. So, got to check it out. Throw in some support. Get that thing funded. All right, up first. Woo! New opening segment. Letters to the throne. Check it out. I got some letters from viewers and stuff, and it's cool. And so we're gonna start off with a letter from. I am a gamer. Dear Angelic One, I love your show. Thanks. Seriously, I really want to play with your D20s. Come on, you think that's funny? Dude. All right. Grimwolf, what's up, dude? Viewer Grimwolf writes, I think you should do an episode on dwarf minis. Now, if you know who Grimwolf is, the guy's like a dwarf fanatic just like I am, which is cool. I mean, I'm totally down with that. Dwarf fanaticism is awesome. Go dwarf. <sighs> All right. Review your favorite dwarf minis from each manufacturer and reasons behind them, etc. Other than that, I love what you're doing. Keep up the good work. Thanks, Grim. You're the man, dog. Oh, one more thing. <laughs> Pull my name out of the darn hat already. A magic hat sitting behind me. Uh, your name's in there, dude, but sort of like 200 other names, so... It's all about the random draw. All right, thanks, Grim. So with that, Grim actually, yeah, that's awesome. First letter from Grim Wolf. He's a YouTube guy and a creative guy, and he's got his own blog. And maybe I'll throw up a link for his blog in the comment section. Kelmore writes, what do you look for in a miniature right off the bat? Well, honestly, the first thing I look for in a miniature right off the bat is a pose, right? It doesn't have to be like a dynamic or an action pose, but it has to be a good pose. Uh, as an animator, um, I make my living, literally, pose to pose. A pose has to tell a story, so that means to me, in, you know, any miniature from no matter what game or what line, it has to tell a story. Even if it's just a lowly old base trooper model, it still has to tell a story, right? Every trooper has a story. So, pose, first thing I look for in a miniature. Where did you get that awesome hat? This hat right here, the one with Mickey Mouse on it? Well, I got it my last Disney trip. Every time I go to Disneyland or to Disney World with the family, I buy a hat. It's like become my own personal tradition, right? I buy a hat and I wear that hat until I go back to Disneyland or Disney World. So this is the last one I bought. This is where my awesome hat came from. Who's your favorite sculptor right now? This was a tough one. This I actually, so I sat in you know, front of the computer for hours um, going over this one and the next one. Windows open and doing comparisons and just trying to get it figured out. But I have to say, and this, this ties into a, a later question from a, another, another viewer, Ivan Santiro is probably my favorite sculptor right now, but there's, there's a couple others that I really have to mention that I find phenomenal, right? And Ivan's one of the, one of the guys behind the Tale of War miniatures, the Ron and Bone stuff. Um, such character in his work, and I just absolutely love him. But uh, uh, Roberto Chaudon, or, or Chaudon, um, I'll throw links up for all these guys, but I'm uh, probably butchering his name. Currently he's doing some stuff for uh, Bane Legions, he's doing like some of the beasts, 
but in the past he's done like a number of my favorite Pegaso models, a non-gaming company that uh, does some amazing stuff, and, and he's one of their one of their guys. And then uh, Fausto Gutierrez, I think his work is phenomenal as well. Um, so you know, it looks like most of my stuff's coming out of the European, uh, you know, like block area, right? So those are my those are my top three favorite sculptors at the moment. I just love what they're doing and how they deliver and portray character in their in their sculpts. He ties that into who is my favorite painter right now. That was a tough one, right? I mean, I there's so many phenomenal painters out there, and I, I have a hard time narrowing it down to just one. So I've grabbed like what I would consider probably three of my top ten. Um, Remy Tremblay, I think, is just phenomenal, and he just did a Gears of War box game set that just blew me away, right? Uh, just amazing. Um, Aaron Lovejoy, Ollie Kickflip on CMON. Uh, if you guys don't know his work, go check it out. Also, he, he did all the early Wrath of Kings uh, pre-production models for, uh, for Wrath of Kings, which I just absolutely love. Um, plus, he's like a speed painting fanatic, right? I mean, he comes up with studio paint jobs like in eight hours. It's just ridiculous. And then finally, uh, Javier Gonzalez, or Arcees, on, uh, on CMON. That guy's paintwork just makes my head spin. I mean, that guy's... Yeah... The, the detail and the highlight, just go look at his stuff. So, uh, what do you think is the most promising upcoming project for this year? Unfortunately, I'm biased. I have to say Wrath of Kings, right? Because, I mean, I've got my hands in that a little bit. I'm doing some work on it. And, and um, I mean, there's a lot of stuff out there that has promise. But, uh, you know, if you can't back your own product and show your own product the most support, well, then you shouldn't be making it, right? Right, right, right. Wrath of Kings. Well, no, woo! And finally, my buddy Banana Republic, Mika, shout out to the Swedes. What up, Swedes? He writes, which factions do you play for the different games you talk about on the show? Well, you know, I mean, I play a lot of games, right? I'll, I'm, I'm totally down with the um, skirmish-based games, so I, I play just tons of them. And we've talked, well, I've talked about why I, I play skirmish-based games instead of army-based games in the past. I'd like army-based games, but skirmish-based games are just so easy to put a force together for and typically a little less time-consuming. I've got three kids, a wife, and like 27 jobs, so my time stretched thin. But Dark Age, we'll start there. I play Scarred, right? I play St. Johan or Father Kerwin. Uh, I've got the air cast kind of on the back burner, but they would be like my third or tertiary force. Uh, Wrath of Kings, I play the Hadros and the Shale Han. Um, you know, I play the Hadros mainly because like I had a decent hand in some of what's going on with those guys. And I really dig their fluff and where they come from. And their overall visual aesthetic is just awesome. I totally love that, right? Once upon a time, I wanted to design aquariums. Uh, you know, and I'm not talking like the little 10-gallon things. I'm talking full on, you know, let's go to the San Diego Aquarium type thing. That's what I'm talking about. Wanted to design those. Confrontation. That's a tough one because, like, I don't own miniatures for two of all the forces. I don't have any Wolfen and I don't have any Daikini. Otherwise, I've got playable forces for everything else. Um, Ammo Tactics, I play the Black Sun. And uh, Hell Dorado, I play the Saracens and the Immortals. Um, you know, right now, those are really kind of my only active games. Uh, so I kind of slipped little this, that, and everything else in there. Um, but uh, for the most part, that's what I got going on. He also asked, what's my favorite game system of all time? That's a really tough question to answer because uh, there's a lot of game systems that hold, like, lots of my heart. I invested a lot of time in War Machine and Hordes, uh, mainly due to the fact that um, I spent a lot of time developing the community in the area that I live, as well as being, um, uh, you know, part of the playtest uh, groups. And and I mean, there was a lot of time spent with War Machine. Um, but I also started with 40K right back in '87 or '88. Bought the rule book the month it was stuck on the shelf. And the late '80s and early '90s, it completely immersed myself in the universe and the fluff and. And so, yeah, it was totally awesome. I mean, I don't play anymore because I don't like kind of where the game has gone. But, uh, you know, always hold a special place in my heart. Confrontation, I absolutely adore it, but never got to play enough of it. Um, that'll change, right? Obviously, that'll change. Um, confrontation, coming back, Phoenix Edition, 
totally jacked for that because I love that game. Um, I, I really enjoy Hell Dorado and uh, Dark Age. Dude, Dark Age is the bomb. That game, it's just like everything dies, literally. I mean, it's like you throw a bunch of models on the table, and at the end of the game, there's one guy left. And that, to me, that's just epic. Unless you're playing like scenarios, and then it's a little bit different. But, anyways. So, I don't have a favorite game system of all times. It's really tough. You know, I mean, I know there's guys out there like Mika himself. He's like, dude, alchemy all the way. He's like, totally loves it. I haven't played it yet. Still don't know. Um, it might, you know, might change my opinion. I really, really dig the mechanics that we've built and developed in Wrath of Kings. So, you know, I hate to cop out and say there are a lot of games that have a lot of special places in my heart. But I know some of you guys and gals out there will totally relate to that. So, that's how I'm going to answer that question. Final question of the day, which company's miniatures do you like the most? Uh, quite honestly, Tale of War miniatures, I think, uh, top my charts. They've got such unique personality, and their posing is incredible. Uh, their concept art is amazing, and it's just phenomenal, right? I will say that uh, Cool Mini or Not has a lot of awesome lines that kind of sit in the, you know, favorites area. Um, Freebooter's Fate has got some really solid stuff. Moving out of the gaming realm, uh, we've got the uh, the Draconian line by Ario, uh, or Ares Mythologic. That stuff is amazing. I mean, there's just the details in, in what they have going on. Whew, head spinning. Um, you know, same with Pegaso, right? Pegaso miniatures outside of the gaming line are just incredible. Just mind-bogglingly awesome. And then uh, Yed Haro is another non-gaming company. We've got this War of the Zodiac line going on right now that just amazes me. I'm just totally fascinated by it. And I'll probably be picking some of that stuff up here in the near future. So you might be seeing uh, some more of the Zodiac stuff here on Throne of Angels. All right. Letters to the Throne. That's it right there. Totally awesome. I'm jazzed about that. And we got another first. Themed episodes. Grimwolf totally taking that idea and running with it. I want you guys to send in your ideas, right? Grim wants an episode of Dwarves. Today, guess what? We're doing Secret Weapon. That's right. Mr. Justin has stepped up. I said, hey, the Army Painter's throwing down. They're giving me, like, a sponsorship, and they're allowing me to use and promote their products, like, here on the blog and out in, in the universe when I'm out, like, throwing down demos and having a good time with the community. I need somebody to do washes and pigments. And Mr. Justin says, all right, I'll bite. I'll, I'll, I'll let you check my stuff out. So I've got secret weapon washes to look at today, I've got some secret weapon products to look at today, and I've got like full on secret weapon support to pimp his stuff. I'm impressed and I will definitely give you my thoughts and opinions on what's going on with it here in a second. So what else are we going to look at? Again, like I said, secret weapon washes. Dude, we gotta like just stop in Project St. Luke. Woo! See where I'm at, the progress on that. Am I going to make the Gen Con date? Let's find out. All right. So, objective markers. Dude, these things are the bomb. Well, I'll show you. A toy. Secret weapon objective markers are going to be spotlighted, first and foremost, right after St. Luke. We've also got the door column, also known as the pillar of pimtasticness. Bag of skulls! That's right. Everybody needs a bag of skulls, including you. I've got one. You need one. If you don't have one, that is. If you do, get another. And one of the products that I've like totally fallen in love with over time, terracotta bricks, right? These are these are from Secret Weapon, but I've been buying like these little bricks over forever. And the reason being is that you can put them on everything. Like literally, they go good on toast. And with that, we're ready to roll. So I need my remote so I can press pause. <laughs> Episode 14 is a go. Progress. <laughs> Project St. Luke in the house. Right. So, as you can see, we are looking top down at the strikes. So, six total with a leader. That gives us options in regards to uh, unit build. But we're not going to talk about that right now. Just know that there are multiple options that we can use to, uh, to arrange this seven set of figures in uh, in gameplay. So, I really need to stop saying so, and I keep telling myself that. Basically, we're going to uh, zoom in and take a quick look at just one of them. So, I'll move everything out of the way. I just picked one at random. All right, 
we are finished with the paint finished with the paint obviously I still need to do the base right just to remind you guys of what the bases look like here's the St. Luke that's what the bases look like right volcanic ashy style ground with uh, uh, blackish red crystals so obviously still need to do the bases but as you can see we are complete on the figure right I wanted to give him a really worn and uh, ruddy look based off the fact that they are you know in leather suits running around with uh, metal gauntlets and face masks and then obviously you know little knee pads and their boots and all that good gravy stuff but uh, yeah that's it right they're done all seven of them just need to scratch or scratch I just need to finish the bases and we uh, we can scratch them off the list but as you can see we're making decent progress not quite halfway there but I'm close We've got about six weeks to go so uh, yeah I think we uh, we're most definitely gonna nail this one look at that that's two bottles a secret weapon awesome sauce we have dark sepia and armor wash quite honestly these are two colors uh, that I use on a very very regular basis from another pair of lines so what I did actually was I took an older dark age model and I ran some tests now I'm going to show you what I did for tests first and foremost I mixed it up and used it as a glaze now I'm going to talk just really quick about the difference between a glaze and an ink wash an ink wash is for shading you use an ink wash to provide contrast a glaze is used for color tinting you use a glaze to blend colors did you hear me to blend colors so if you're using multiple colors or layered highlights obviously a glaze is a good way to blend the colors together and tie them all up or you use it to tint colors and that's what I did here on her legs so the dark sepia I used basically straight out of the bottle as a glaze was thoroughly amazed at the coverage oh, bumping my tripod getting all crazy trying to you know get all groovy with my hands and whatnot so as you cannot see because there we go as you can see that is just a one past layer glaze on her legs right so again the difference between a glaze and a wash a glaze is a color tint a wash is a contrast tint now how do you get a wash out of an ink well you can do one of two things you can lay it into the recesses or you can start mixing it with water you can thin it down that's what I did for her hair as you can see there's a much different coverage same color the dark sepia between her legs and her hair now her hair as you can see because of the fact that I used water to thin it down that dark sepia laid into those um, into those recesses and gave it a nice shade right there's still a color tint but again an ink wash is used for shading and contrast as you can see there's great shade great contrast there now I took the armor wash actually thinned it with water a little bit and used it as a glaze so same technique but I different application this is the armor wash look at how that covers this is two passes with the armor wash on the shield we'll look at the inside because I did the inside as well right two passes the coverage is absolutely amazing I am thoroughly and utterly impressed and I will be pimping secret weapon washes for the rest of my hobby career that is all there is to it so mister Justin these things are amazing you are a winner at washes my friend alright so remember glazes are to blend color right tint washes contrast alright that's my lesson for the day on basic art but yeah look at that I am just thoroughly amazed at these things totally impressed um, I will say that I've used a number of different competing products so far um, 
just based off of what I've done with a little bit of, of these things is yeah dude it's just unfathomable anyways secret weapon washes this is what they look like they're badass not only they're amazing but they come with really cool names like baby poop and you know stuff like that so secret weapon washes it's time for you to check them out yourself next up secret weapon objective markers check these things out detail on these things is amazing right We've got camo covers over crates. We got a big bullet. We got a giant bullet, right? Who doesn't like bullets? I love the bullets. Here's a cool thing, right? You can look around, you can look around. You see the question mark? Look at that question mark. Secret weapon logo on. See the question mark? On the objective markers. How sweet is that, right? Dude, that is so cool back up in there behind the bullet I don't know if you saw it but yeah I believe each one of these has a question mark secret weapon logo look at that so sick Justin you're a genius alright and finally behind the barrels yeah again these things high quality resin right 40 millimeter bases 40 millimeter base various crates covers and here's what's cool right I love base work that breaks the plane of the base. I know some people like freak out about it and go all like crazy, but the camo covers or the uh, tarps, whatever you want to call these things, they totally lace over the basing. And I totally dig that. Super awesome. Super awesome. Fantastic stuff. They're sturdy, they're die-hard, they're Billy Badass. Secret weapon objective markers. You need some. What have we here? Oh, ah, that's right. The Pillar of Pimptasticness, also known as a Doric Column. And that's Doric, not Dork. It's not a Dork Column. It's a Doric Column. Now, as you can see, we have got male and female ends, which means they stack together quite nicely if I do say so myself right look at that stack together perfect it's all good it's calm now if I was like awesome I could just totally line them up perfectly right off the go but I'm just semi awesome so I didn't get them lined up perfectly right off the go I got them partially or semi lined up right that's where the semi awesome comes from as you can see it's a giant column you can use it either with a base or the other way around as a topper right one or the other I will say I would actually like it if I had two tops or bottoms or was able to get these singly so Mr. Justin if you're watching that would be cool right give me the ability to get these on their own so I can cap or close my door column right Obviously, I need one with a male version since this one is a female version. That would be sweet. Now, the applications, quite honestly, are really simple. You make a column. You buy a bunch of them. You make a building, right? Otherwise, you might crack them in half and make some broken columns. <laughs> How's that? That's funny, right? Anyways, yes. It's a quality resin product. Secret miniatures. Excuse me. Secret weapon miniatures. I don't know if you guys can see this, but we are talking perfect cast quality. We have a piece of dust in there. How sad is that? I have dust. The only thing I can find wrong with this in regards to casting is that there was dust on it. And that was probably from my office because this place is dustier than all get out. Oh, oh man. Look at that. I got a little bit of resin residue. Holy cow! I can't even see a mold. These things are perfect. This is awesome. Again, I'm looking for imperfections, right? That's what I'm looking for. The little little imperfections that drive me nuts. I mean, here's a, here's what I find really awesome is the bottom of this is completely flat. A lot of times when you have a circular object that's made in resin, you will get some sort of bubbling through here. No bubbling, no issues, no problems. You know, a little bit of filing that I'll have to do right there 
other than that, I don't even have to do anything with this. I just glue it together and paint it. That's it right there. The door column. Secret weapon miniatures. That's money. Now, for all of you uh, old school 80s movie fans, what do I got here? I got a sack of skulls. Next time I come in here, I'm cracking skulls. What movie's that from? Somebody throw it up in the comment section. I might send you something. As you can see, I've got a bag full of skulls. What does that mean? That means I have a bag full of skulls. Let's crack these bad boys open. See, here's the brilliance, right? Ziploc baggie. That's smart. Ziploc baggie full of skulls. How many skulls do we have in here? I don't know. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. A buttload, right? There's a ton of them in there. I don't know. But they all look kind of different. They all are different. This one's... Look, this... Hey, look! A cracked skull! <laughs> That's funny. I'm going to zoom on that one because that was awesome. I'm going to push him up to the middle. I crack myself up. Get it? Crack, crack skulls? Never mind. Y'all are just missing it. No, wait. I'm talking to myself. So, crack skull. That's pretty sick. Let me find my tweezers. That's the French version of tweezers. I don't think it really is, but it sounded good, right? I'm going to zoom out a little bit so uh, we're not so blurry. See if we can get some detail on this action. These are really hard to show you guys in detail because picking them up, not... Whoa, hey, there goes a the skull. I saw where it went, though. Not real easy. But, uh, well, guess what? I'll just lay some of them flat and super zoom in on this so you guys can see. There's one of the cracked ones. There's one. There's one. There's one. There's one. So I'm going to push these up so I can super zoom on them. They're not laying flat anymore. Man, I feel like a monkey with my hand wrapped around a banana trying to get it out of a box because I am just fumbling. Here, I'm going to pause. Holy cow! I wouldn't necessarily call that an exercise of utility, but it was definitely one of patience. <laughs> so, yeah, it took me like, you know, four minutes just to line up six skulls in a straight line. Mainly because I'd like set one up and knock one down. As you can see, we have a bag full of skulls, and they are all very finely detailed. And that's as close as you're going to get in regards to seeing the detail. Let's see if I can rock one up without covering it up. Can I do it? Can I do it? Can I do it? No. Because my thumbs are just too big. So here, how about if we do this? And back it out a little bit. There we go. Look at that. Oh, it's a skull! Let go of my head. All right. Now again, high quality resin skull casts. You get a bag of skulls, which is approximately that many right there. That, yeah, that's a bag of skulls. So awesome. I love it because the applications are endless. Go get a bag. Even if you have a bag, get another. Last, but certainly not least, in this first themed episode. Throne of Angels video blog. What up, secret weapon? This is my bag of bricks. It's bricks in a bag. They're terracotta in color, right? I mean, there's more bricks in here. There's like, you can build a little house with these things. But anyways, we'll check them out and take a look. Quite honestly, they're bricks, right? So, I mean, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at rectangles. But as you can see, multiple different colors, right? Just like you would find in a natural environment. Multiple different colors of terracotta or red bricks. So, what are they good for? Any number of things. Dioramas, right? If you really want to take the time to build a house, it is really going to take a long time with bricks of this size. But go right ahead. I want to see it. I challenge one of you to do it. Send me pictures. I'll send you something cool, right? If somebody out there builds... Like an, I don't care what kind of house. Build any type of house with this thing. I will send you something big, right? I mean, that's just awesome. If you're going to take that kind of undertaking and do something that crazy, I will send you something big. But as you can see, quality is there, right? I mean, there's like no... I'm not even going to look for mold lines on these things because they're just not there, right? I mean, look at them. That's front, back, and side all the way around. No mold lines or anything. 
quite honestly, this is a simple tool to make your miniatures come to life. Put them on bases, dioramas, set them up, uh, you know, in your in your terrain and cityscapes. Applications are limitless, limited only by your imagination. Now, talking for more than two minutes about something as simple as a bag full of bricks, well, that's just not my style. So there it is. Whew, man, I don't know about you, but I'm exhausted, right? I'm just kidding, I'm not. I'm like totally jacked, dude. So, first themed episode, secret weapon, Mr. Justin, you're in the house. I love you, man. I love your products. I am super stoked to be able to uh, stick his banner up on my page and say, yeah, I use secret weapon washes. We'll check out pigments sometime here in the near future. Now, like I said, they are amazing, right? Quite honestly, some of the best, best line of, of inks and washes and glazes or glaze washes and inks, whatever you want to call them. Some of the best that I've, had, I've gotten my hands on and I am super impressed. I can't say enough good things about them, right? On top of that, dude, he's got some wicked cool little, little products. Um, you know, dude, those objective markers, tell me who doesn't need those. You can use them for any gaming system that you have, right? Especially if you're playing like 40K or if you're throwing down with like War Machine. I mean, they just fit in with what you're doing. Everything. Dark Age, right? I will use them for Wrath of Kings. I would, everything that I got sitting over here, I will use them those for, right? Again, the, the Pillar of Pimptasticness or the Door of Calm. Such a, dude, you should change it to Pillar of Pimptasticness, Mr. J. So... You know, dude, it's cool, right? And the reason why it's cool is because you can do a few number, a number of different things with it. On top of it, you buy half of them, you build your, or half a dozen of them, you build yourself the Greek Colosseum, or the front facade of it, anyways. Colosseum, the Pantheon. Sorry, the Pantheon. I'm like totally like mixing my, 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 what you call it? Architecture. <laughs> yeah. So, what else do we have? Bag of skulls. Dude, bag of skulls, it's just cool, right? So many applications. Bases. You can dioramas, uh, you can put them wherever you want to. And then, you know, finally the red bricks. I showed you the bricks because the bricks are just cool, right? Everybody needs bricks, everybody needs skulls. The columns, everybody needs those too. Now, what do we got coming? The next Throne of Angels. We're going to have our first head to head. That's right, head to head. I'm not going to make a graphic for that. I'm just like going to say it like that. <laughs> Sometimes I make myself laugh, right? And that's the best part about it. Make yourself laugh. So, yeah, if you guys. Like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe button. It's up here somewhere. I think it's this side. It might be that side. I don't know because it's like I'm facing the camera and stuff. So, yeah, if you guys like what I'm doing, hit the subscribe. You can like me if you like. That's cool, too. I'm down with that. Dislike. If you dislike, shoot me a comment. Let me know what I can do to, uh, you know, improve, right? I'm here for the long haul, and I want you guys to enjoy what I'm doing. So if you enjoy it, subscribe. If not, leave me a comment. Tell me what I can do to make it better. I totally appreciate the feedback. Small requests, right? Request from the TOA. Themed episodes. I want to know, you know, do I'm totally in with Grim? Am I going to do dwarves next next time? I don't know. Maybe. We'll see. Yeah, themed episodes. Send in your ideas, everybody. Send in your letters. Um, you know, your questions to, uh, to well, you can shoot me a, an email, throneofangels at gmail.com. I'm cool with that. Shoot me an email. Um, or send me a message on the YouTube in the inbox, right? Then click my name and do the in send message thing. You can do that. Uh, but again, Throne of Angels at gmail.com works just fine. Send me, hey, more explosions. Send me, uh, send me your questions, right? Can I, can I give you some tips? Are there things that, that you want to know uh, that I, I'm totally having a meltdown here? So give me a second to regroup. <laughs> a drink of water always helps. So if there's anything. That, uh, that you guys have questions on, right? If you want some hobby tips, or if you guys want some gaming tips, or if you, you know, if you just want to send me a message, and I'm not, that D20 thing was not funny, right? I'm not letting anybody play with my, they're my D20s, mine, and stop, right? So yeah, get involved, right? Subscribe, like, shoot me a message, suggest the themes, shoot me comments, all that fun stuff. I love the interaction. Now, if you guys got anything you want to see specifically, if you want me to pick up anything and review it, let me know, and I will do my best to get it done. Other than that, thank you for joining me. We'll see you guys in two.